and welcome to Stealing Hearts Homestead. My name is Heather. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, this video is going to be about rabbits and things I wish I would have known prior to getting into them. If you watched my previous video, you would have seen that the food inside my pressure cooker exploded. Um, I'm proud to report that the redness from my skin is completely gone now and I have no blisters, so that is wonderful. Um, I'm also going to be doing an Amazon gift card giveaway, so do go ahead and watch the video from start to finish in order to be um, entered in, and then I'll give you some other instructions at the end of the video. Really simple things, leave a comment, subscribe, that kind of thing, uh, in order to be entered into that, and we'll go from there. All right, so we'll get on into it. So the first thing I want to get into is some rabbit lingo. Um, some things that you might not be uh, familiar with yet. So a doe is going to be a female rabbit. A buck is going to be a male rabbit. Um, and then you have kits, which are the babies that are born um, from the doe. And then you have juniors. Juniors are rabbits that are less than six months. So if you are looking for a rabbit and you see someone that says they have a junior doe, that means that they have a female rabbit that's less than six months old. Um, and then you have fall-offs. Fall-offs are where the male rabbit breeds with the female rabbit and they quite literally fall off. <laughs> and it's quite funny to watch. So those are the main terms that you're going to run into when you're breeding rabbits. So the first thing that I wish I would have known when I was breeding rabbits is that not all rabbits are created equal. It took me a while to find some rabbits that I was interested in and I ended up finding some about an hour away. Um, and they were California, New Zealand is what I was told. And unfortunately, I did not ask enough questions and I ended up not being happy with the trio that I got home. They were beautiful rabbits. I was a first time rabbit owner. I didn't know what size they should be for you know their age. I was just kind of going based off what the breeder told me. And by the time they were four months old, they were still really small. And I was like, this is just not going to work. This isn't going to be sufficient for what I want it to do. They're not going to grow fast enough. Um, so I started looking for additional breeders and it was really, really hard to find a breeder that fit what I was actually looking for. You know, I was looking for New Zealand's or California's or Flemish Giants and I was Googling the registry and nobody had them anymore. Nobody was breeding anymore. Um, so it was really hard. I ended up going to quite a few Craigslist pages um, that were outside of my area. And I ended up finding one that was about two and a half hours away from me uh, down by the Mexican border because I live here in Arizona. Um, so I contacted that breeder. She said, yes, I actually have some does that are currently pregnant that I am looking to sell. Um, and I also have a Flemish giant mixed buck who's about four months old and he's a really good size as well. Um, so we ended up you know, having a conversation back and forth. It took me a couple of weeks to get down there. So by the time I did get down there, um, both of the does ended up having six kits each. So not only did I get two does and a buck, I also ended up getting uh, 12 kits along with it. So I spent $105 for all of these rabbits. And what was really great is she had a really large operation there. So I was able to see um, the dad and the mom of the buck that I was getting. And the buck, when I got him home and compared him to the three rabbits that I had previously purchased, he was like twice the size of them. And they were basically the same age. And I was like, yeah, there's no wonder why I am feeling that these three are not going to work out. Um, the three that I did end up getting, I actually ended up processing them and I uh, got an experience that. So that was kind of cool. So that did give me at least a little bit of knowledge that I did not have before, which was processing them. And then I just kept the three that I had purchased from the new breeder. Um, like I said, it can be really hard to find good rabbits in your area because a lot of people breed for dwarf rabbits because they're looking to make money on selling them as pets. So driving a fair distance is something that you're probably going to have to do in order to find a good breeding pair or trio. Um, so I wish I would have known that before. It definitely took me quite a bit of time. And don't just jump into what you see first. Don't make my mistake of, yes, these sound good. You know, ask a lot of questions. Ask what size do you think they're going to be by four months? How big are the parents? What size litters do they normally have? Um, 
and find a breeder that's completely okay with you asking a bunch of questions. Because even when I got my current breeding trio home, I had a lot of questions and the breeder that I got them from was fabulous. She had no problem answering any questions I had. Um, so it really helped. So another thing I wish I would have known is that rabbits can kindle anywhere from 28 days to 40 days. And that is a really long waiting period. Um, so you definitely wanna put their nesting box in um, around that 28 day mark um, and wait. And you might find that they don't kittle until 40 days. And that's a long, like I said, waiting period. And it can have you pulling your hair out wondering whether or not your rabbits are pregnant um, or if they're not. So that is something that you're definitely gonna wanna keep an eye on. Another thing that I didn't know, which had me contacting the breeder I got my rabbits from, was that different litters don't develop at the same rate of speed. Um, so my two girls actually, um, from what I was told, gave birth on the same day. Um, but my rabbit Elsa, she ended up, her kids had their eyes open like right on time, according to what Google said that they should have their eyes open by. Um, but Snow White, she did not. And I was kind of panicking. I was like, are you sure these kids are as old as you say they are? Are they younger? What's going on? Um, because you know, their, their eyes were still closed well past what Google said their eyes should be closed by. Um, and so she's like, no, it's just fine. Different rabbits, you know, they take longer. Some don't, it's going to be just fine. Um, and then at one point, one of my female rabbits kind of stopped eating and I was like, what's going on? Is it going to be okay? And, um, I guess weather changes have a little bit to do with how active they are on eating. Um, so she just stopped eating for like a day or two, maybe, I don't know. I was just kind of monitoring how full the feeder was and it didn't seem like it was really going down any, um, but she's eating like a champ now. So, uh, you know, fluctuations on eating is totally normal. You just definitely want to keep an eye in case, you know, they stop eating for longer periods of time, uh, you're definitely gonna wanna keep an eye on that. Rabbits can get pregnant right after having babies. So if you expose your rabbit to a male right after she's just kittled and had her kids, she's gonna get pregnant again. Rabbits, which I didn't know, do not have a breeding cycle like dogs or cats, they don't have a heat cycle. So what happens is the male will breed with the female and that action actually um, induces an egg to be dropped or eggs to be dropped. Um, so that is how they ended up getting pregnant and how you get the term breeding like rabbits because they don't have that traditional breeding cycle where they come into heat, you know, every two months or every six months. Um, they just come into heat whenever they get bred, uh, which is why they're so easy and successful for new people to get into and start breeding rabbits for food. It's it's extremely easy. It's something that I didn't know uh, when talking about litter size because my litters are only, from what I've seen, I've only had one litter so far and then I did go ahead and breed the girls. Uh, so they should be doing about two weeks, maybe three weeks, depending on how long it takes for them. Um, is that it is okay to breed your rabbits more than one time. So say you take the female rabbit and you put it in the buck's cage because you should always take the girl to the boy. Um, if you put the boy in with the girl, he's gonna spend a whole lot of time sniffing around. So you always take the girl out and you put it in the buck's cage. Um, is that you can do that more than one day. So what I did when I first bred my girls, and I'm gonna try this the next time I breed them, um, is the first time what I did is I just put the girl in there, I made sure he had one or two fall offs, and then I went and I did some stuff around the house, left the girls in with him for a couple of hours, and then put them back with their kits. Um, and what has been brought to my attention since then is that it's completely okay to take her back the next day and do the same thing and do that for two or three days. Um, so that way you're stimulating those eggs to be dropped and you're getting more of a chance of a good breed to happen Then make sure she takes. Um, and so I'm gonna try that next time to see if that increases my litter size or not. Um, I'm kind of interested to see if it makes a difference. If it doesn't, then it's just a whole lot of work that I don't need to do. Um, and then, Female rabbits can get pregnant as early as four months, sometimes sooner, but generally four months um, is what it's gonna take. And same with bucks, they're pretty good around four months. Sometimes it can take a little bit longer, same with girls. So I would say four months is probably gonna be the earliest that a, you know, a rabbit can get pregnant or get someone pregnant. Um, and so with that said, it is completely okay to put kits from different litters. 
and grow out cages together. If you want, because you're afraid that you're gonna keep your rabbits more than four months, you can definitely split them up by genders, but if you're planning on processing them or splitting them up during that time period, you can keep the girls and the boys together from different litters. I just did that, my kids are six weeks old. So I just went ahead and gave the moms a break, uh, put them in their own cages, and I have all the kids in one grow out pen that's fairly large. What I personally am doing is I'm waiting till the kids are four weeks old and then I'm breeding the parents. And so I'll breed the does and then I'll put them back in with their kits. And then two weeks later, I will go ahead and remove them from their kits. So that way they have about two weeks um, that they can just be by themselves and kind of recuperate and get ready for their next litter. So one thing that I have not had to experience yet is biting. I've seen a lot of posts where people get bit by their rabbits, scratched by their rabbits, different things like that. Thankfully, I have not come across that yet. Um, and yeah, I'm wearing gloves to make sure just in case that's going to happen, I am prepared. Um, but rabbits do bite. Um, and if you, especially if you scare a rabbit, so do be prepared for that. It is a possibility. It's not something I don't think that's gonna happen to you every day. And if you have a mean, nasty rabbit, I would just get rid of it and find yourself a replacement. It's not worth the hassle. My two girls are 18 months old, uh, maybe a little bit older than that. They're really used to being handled and moved around and they're completely fine. You just put their head in the crook of your arm so that you can't really see where they're going and they don't bite you at all. One thing I did notice with getting the girls here is their nails were really, really long. Um, so I am working on getting their nails clipped. I don't know that that's something the previous breeder ever did. I mean, their nails are, are long, um, much longer than I think they should be. Um, so that's something to keep in mind is that you might have to clip your rabbit's nails every once in a while. So it's definitely good to make sure that you have rabbits that are used to being handled. And if you're getting rabbits young, uh, start handling them as much as you can to get them ready and prepared for the fact that you are going to be handling them quite a bit. So one other thing to talk about is food and water. I live here in Arizona where it can get kind of hot. Um, so I, one of the things that I'm really gonna focus on is making sure that the rabbits have enough water. Currently, we're in the 70s, so they're going through water at a pretty normal rate, um, but it is going to start getting hotter. Um, so you definitely want to keep that in mind when you have rabbits. Cold and hot times um, can really cause some problems. Um, so I personally am going to install a mister system when it gets a little bit hotter. I have also started saving milk jugs and soda bottles and things like that that I can stick in my freezer uh, with water and get those frozen water bottles and put out in their cages. So that way if they do start to get hot, they can just go and sit by them and cool down. Um, when it comes to cold, rabbits do tend to do pretty well in the cold. Here in Arizona, we really don't get that far down. Maybe it'll get into the 30s, um, but rabbits still tend to do pretty well. Um, one of the other things that I didn't know is when I got these kits, the um, breeder had already put in these types of shavings, um, straw shavings, I think, um, that the moms were using for bedding. And it worked pretty well for most of the kits that were in there, um, except for a couple. They would dig themselves so deep into the hay that I don't think they had a chance to really come out and nurse on mom. And one of the sad facts about having rabbits is that you are going to lose kits. And um, one of the kits that was in the litter with Snow White was a runt substantially smaller than the others and it just kept digging itself so deep into the straw shavings that there were times that i thought that i had lost him i couldn't find the kit anywhere i thought well, where did it go and i really had to dig in there in order to find them and I mean, he wouldn't be or he or she wouldn't be with the other kits and she, you know it was so much smaller like half the size of the others um, that it just did not stand a chance to get to mom when it came for feeding time. If I had to dig that much through, then there was no way that that kit was going to be able to get out and feed on mom. Um, so I would definitely recommend some sort of straw, not shavings, but just regular straw. Let the rabbit take it and milk, build their own bed so that way you don't have to worry about the rabbit getting lost in the shavings. Um, because the sad truth of it is, is that you'll lose the rabbits. And I did end up losing that kit. And it was one of my favorites because it was the only one that was not all white. 
And so I was really sad. I did try to save it by feeding it kitten formula and that just didn't work. And it's not something I'm ever gonna do before or again. Um, if I have runs, I'm just gonna let it run its course uh, because kitten formula leak can be kind of expensive and it doesn't always work because sometimes they can breathe in the formula and then you cause aspiration, pneumonia. And it's just, it's a lot of work and I think I'm just gonna let nature take its course in that regard. All right, if you've had chickens, you are well aware of chicken math. It's just a known thing. If you have chickens, you know about it. And I'm sad to say this same thing is going to happen with rabbits. So I have just my, tr my trio right now, plus the kids that are in the girl pens. And you know what? I'm gonna keep all three of the girls currently. Um, and the reason for that is because the buck I have is completely unrelated to the girls. Um, and the girls are New Zealand, Flemish, California crosses. So I'm hoping they'll get to a pretty good size because the other girls um, that I have that are my breeding stock right now are New Zealand California mixes. Um, I don't think they have any Flemish in them. So I would like to keep the girls because they are completely unrelated to the buck. And hopefully I can start getting away from the all white rabbits with white eye or red eyes. Um, I only got one ermine kit this time and ermine, which I did not know, is a all white rabbit with black eyes. So I do have one of those and so I'm trying to kind of stay away from the red eyes. And the reason for that is it doesn't change the meat or anything that I'm going to do, but I would love to be able to sell a rabbit or two each month because if I can sell a rabbit for 20 bucks, that's a 50 pound bag of feed that I can use to feed my rabbits. So with that rabbit math comes cages. You're going to either need to buy or build cages. And building cages is time consuming to say the least. You're going to get scratched up if you do it, wear long sleeves. And then when you cut out the doors, you're gonna need a Dremel to grind down the edges because if you don't, you're going to get scratched up by when you stick your hands into the cage and pull out a rabbit or to you know put in a rabbit all those edges are going to get you and scratch you up so you definitely want to trimmel those down also when it comes to cages make sure that you're making the doors big enough um, i made the mistake on my first one where i didn't make the door very large um, and the reason why you do need to make the door big is because you need to be able to get the nesting box in there so you need to make it at least the size of the nesting box that you're going to use um, so that way you can easily get it in and get it out when the time comes. So if you ever try to sex rabbits, you know it can be hard. Um, I made a couple videos on sexing rabbits. So if you need to know how to do it, you can go into one of my previous videos and see that. Um, I got to the point where I was thinking, uh, boy, 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 maybe I don't know what I'm doing. Everything I'm saying is a boy. Um, and then I ran into a girl and I was like, oh yeah, I, I do know what I'm doing. But there are people out there who, and I'm, I will be one of them, that's going to sex a rabbit, say it's a boy or a girl, and a couple months later it will change sex. <laughs> so that is a very common thing. You are not always going to get it right. It can be challenging. Um, and the one I did mention before, it's something I didn't know, always take the girl to the boy. Um, and the reason, like I stated earlier, was that the boy will sniff around the girl's cage if you take him to her. So you just want to take her to him and the buck will get down to business. Also, like I stated earlier, leave the girl in there for a couple of hours. Make sure he has one or two fall offs and then go do some things and come back. I also mentioned that I'm going to go ahead and try it where I do it again the next day and maybe even a third day to see if that increases litter size. And I will be posting a video about that. Um, but since my girls are currently pregnant, um, it's gonna be a while before I get to that point. So it's probably gonna be a couple of months before I can really do a video on um, if it increases litter size and when that comes because they have probably another two or three weeks before they kittle and then another four weeks before I breed them again and then uh, yeah it's, it's gonna be a while <laughs> before that video comes out. So you're always gonna want to check on your rabbits. Check on your rabbits after they give birth um, and you want to check on the new babies every day to make sure that none of them have managed to get themselves out of the nesting box because what will happen is they'll latch onto mom so that way they start feeding when mom's in the a nesting box and the mom will go to jump out, but the kids won't let go. Um, and so sometimes they'll end up getting dragged out of the nesting box and depending on the weather, if it's cold or too hot, they'll end up dying. 
Um, and one thing I learned is that if you look at their nails, if there are blood pools in their nails, like their nails are red, that means that they're gone. A lot of people um, will go by the philosophy warm and dead. If they're not warm, then they don't pronounce them dead yet. They wait until they're warm and not responsive before they say that they lost the kit. Um, and a lot of people will put them someplace warm. They'll put them, you know, against their chest to warm them up, or they'll put them in a bag and put them in hot water um, or warm water to try to raise that body temperature. And once they're warm and dead, that's when they call it quits. When you do go to check on the kids, if you move around, they'll stop popping like popcorn because they think mom's in their nest and they are trying to get to mom so that way they can feed. Unfortunately, this popping like popcorn, um, time ends up making them babies go everywhere. So if the lip on your nesting box is not high enough, they will pop on out and you're gonna need to be able to catch them and put them back in and then wait a few minutes to make sure everything is calmed down before you go away because you definitely don't want one to pop out and end up losing it. Last thing to go over is that you wanna keep the bucks away from the does. Um, and the reason for that is you don't wanna stress them out. You wanna make sure that mom feels comfortable with her kids. Um, so you definitely want to keep them separate. And then if you have more than one buck and their cages are next to one another, have a divider. Um, because if you don't, it's very likely that they will start peeing on each other and one of them will become a just a complete disaster. All right, and last but not least, a tracking system. Um, so what I personally like to use is Hutch. Unfortunately, they do not have an application yet. So what I did is I saved the website to the home screen of my iPhone um, and it logs me right in. What I really like about it is if I go ahead and I put in that I bred my rabbit, um, it will tell me when her expected due date is, when to do a pregnancy check, um, when to put the nesting box in. I can add things like when I want to butcher my kits so that way um, when I'm looking at the calendar, I know that that's coming up. It keeps track of their birthdays, their weight, all that stuff. And I think it's a fantastic application. Um, I think they're working on a mobile app. They just have not put it out yet. I'm really looking forward to that coming out. They do have a yearly subscription, depending on how fancy you want to get, depends on the cost, um, but it's a wonderful application to keep track of all of your litters, um, who the dad is, who the mom is, especially if you have a very large operation or you get into that thing we talked about earlier with rabbit math, where you end up with quite a few rabbits. Um, it's definitely a very, very helpful thing to have because there is nothing worse than your um, doe coming due and she gives birth to babies on the wire because you forgot to put the nesting box in on time. Um, so definitely go ahead and head over and check that out. I'm not an affiliate. I don't get any special things. Um, so if you just Google Hutch, you should be able to find it. It's a rabbit um, tracking program and it's a really great thing to have. All right, so I know this is a rather long video compared to the ones that I have posted earlier. I do appreciate you sticking through it and watching everything. Um, like I did go ahead and post at the beginning of the video, I am going to be doing an Amazon gift card giveaway. So once we hit 100 subscribers, I will go ahead and give away a $25 Amazon gift card. In order to be entered into that gift card, you do have to watch this video from start to finish. Um, and then you do have to comment down below uh, in order to be entered. So once we have 100 subscribers, we will go ahead and do a drawing. So please do subscribe, comment, and watch the video.